Everybody ready? Good evening. Uh, this is the Community Redevelopment Agency virtual regular meeting. It is Tuesday, July 28, 2020 at 5.33 p.m. Can you please call the roll? Chair Llewellyn. Here. Vice Chair Odman. I see you. You're muted. How about now? Thank you. Here. <laughs> Board Member Brandemart. You're also muted. Monica. Gotcha. Board Member Harris. Here. Thank you. Board Member James. Muted. Okay. Here. CRA Director Williams. Here. City Attorney Ansbro. Here. Hey, um, I didn't see any citizens' comments sent in, and I don't see anyone on the list of people signed in that is not an employee. Okay. Um, so, administrative reports. Executive Director? Yes, good evening, CRA Board. Um, I wanted to share a few highlights from our administrative report for this month. Um, the first point and the main point that I wanted to highlight is that I'll be providing you with our proposed budget next week, and I will be requesting individual meetings with you for the week after to go over any questions or concerns that you may have. Uh, I am seeking also to have a CRA uh, budget workshop if that is desired by the board and uh, maybe that's something that we can um, discuss a, a little bit later on. Um, I know that last year we had had a special meeting for our workshop and if the board would like to go over things in more depth and detail uh, we can do that but for the August 25th meeting I will be uh, going into uh, the meeting doing a discussion about our budget. So if you want to wait until then, or if you want to have a meeting just for the budget, uh, I think you can provide me with some dates after we meet individually. Um, also, I, I wanted to highlight that we did provide the information for our business survey. Uh, what I found is that most of the uh, businesses who responded, uh, they all pretty much have the same concerns and the same issues. Uh, the response rate, I would say, was pretty low, but I think it was consistent across Broward County, given that only a thousand businesses across the county responded to the Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliances survey, as well as our uh, Greater Danny Beach Chamber of Commerce survey, there were 20 responders uh, for that survey. So we're pretty much in line with the response rate um, of our chamber and um, for the county. Um, I do want to let you know that the patch remains closed to retail customers, but we are continuing to do online orders. We think it's um, better to operate in this manner. We did reopen, um, but when we saw uptick in cases, uh, we, did, we decided to close back down for retail customers. So I just want you to know that we are still um, not allowing that at this time. If conditions improve, then we will explore reopening again. Um, we are preparing for our next loan to grant conversion request to Broward County. Uh, we have started the preliminary research uh, so that we can identify those properties in which uh, there was an increase in taxable value as a result of improvements that were done in the original CRE area. We anticipate submitting that to the county by the end of the month, uh, uh, the end of August, excuse me. Uh, we do also have a few things coming up in August. We have uh, anticipated closing dates for the first four homes in our affordable housing program. Uh, I will provide you with information uh, once it is firm, but we do have our first tentative closing date for August 7th. Um, that's not 100%. As you may know, if you've purchased a home before, sometimes the closing date moves for different reasons. Uh, so I will keep you apprised uh, as to those closing dates. Uh, we are also in talks with the casino at Dania Beach as well as Dania Point on partnering for uh, a few events uh, that they have coming up. And we're looking to make sure that we 
market and promote the city and really energize folks and let folks know that there, there is activity in the city. Uh, so we do want to support those major property owners, the casino at Dania Beach and Dania Point. Uh, as you know, the more uh, events and activities that are uh, at those locations, the more um, business activity those um, developments, those property owners will see. So we really want to support them. Um, I do also want to let you know that our um, beautification program continues and we do have a special resident, Miss Evelyn Williams. Uh, she is actually a recipient of this um, beautification program and her home is being painted this week. If you would like to attend July 31st at 10 a.m., Rebuilding Together Broward County will be there. And this resident is turning 105 on August 2nd. And I know there's a special event or like a drive-through event being planned um, for Sunday, August 2nd at 2 p.m. But we wanna pay special attention um, because this resident is also a participant in our program. So if you'd like to uh, show your support and go out and paint, uh, we welcome you to do so, of course, wear your mask and you know equipment will be provided to you. Uh, as far as our uh, signage is concerned, I did provide you with some imagery of some mock-up signs in larger sizes for the parks that are on our um, main corridors or on main streets. Um, that was one of the, the points that was brought up a couple meetings back. So uh, what the sign company did was create replicas and uh, CRA staff and uh, city staff went out to the sites and literally held up you know the replicas in different sizes to see what would be most appropriate and so what we've provided is um, just uh, the mock-up so that you know that we have taken your concerns into consideration and we are making the appropriate adjustments and uh, that is all I have if you have any questions uh, let me know I don't see any hands raised. Okay, thank you very much. So the next item then is our presentations. And the first one is commercial property improvement grants. Okay, so before we get into it, I really want to uh, highlight that the CRA typically uh, celebrates completed commercial property improvement grants by having a grand reopening celebration. So many of you were on the board when we did celebrations for TNT fireworks, uh, dockers, um, um, the daycare uh, in our uh, CRA district also. So I just want you to know that because of COVID-19 and the restrictions that we have and wanting to promote health and safety, we took a different route uh, for these property improvement grants. Uh, I do want to let you know that these grants serve to beautify our community, it serves to attract businesses to become tenants of those buildings or for patrons to go and shop at those businesses and support those businesses. I did a little research on, for the Fish Grill and Alex's Flamingo Garden, which are two, uh, from Flamingo Grove, excuse me, which are two of the businesses that are highlighted uh, today. I looked at the property value increase from last year to this year and both of those buildings have increased by 15%. And we know that the improvements that we have supported and encouraged, as well as what the property owner has added to the support that we've given them, has served to increase those property values. And what that means is we're going to have more taxable value in the city as a result. So the efforts that the CRA um, has with these businesses, as far as improving their aesthetics, that's something that improves our taxable values and that's why it's very important. So um, Frank or our IT manager is going to assist us. We're going to look at Associates MD, then the Fish Grill and Alex's Flamingo Grove. And these videos that we're providing today, they're really um, for marketing the grant so that we can tell other business owners that this is something they should participate in. Okay, Frank, whenever you're ready. All right, I'm going to start the video. Just let me know for some reason, throw up a hand or something if you can't hear it. Hang 
hang on one second. So. And I'll just note this while we're waiting. Uh, the, the businesses or the properties that are adjacent to the properties that we've helped with our grant, their taxable values have only increased uh, by not even 1%. I'm getting, I didn't hear that, is that true? I'm going to have to jump off the meeting and jump back on. Give me about a minute. I'm sorry about that. here today with Sergio Lafrada of Associates MD, one of the recipients of our Commercial Property Improvement Grant. We have today probably around uh, 60 uh, providers, uh, doctors and mid-levels providers uh, spread around 20 some locations in Broward mostly. Probably 90% of our work is done as primary care. Well, can you tell us how the Dania Beach CRA's Commercial Property Improvement Grant has assisted your business? Well, you guys were absolutely delightful to work for the CRA group. Uh, we had, uh, since the beginning, fully support from you, Hikal, and from the Andre, and uh, we was a very uh, seamless process, really. Uh, we went through the presenting the documentation, everything, very simple, and uh, you guys were able to uh, grant us uh, $20,000. And the building looks beautiful, uh, much nicer than it used to be. So could you tell us a little bit about the improvements that you made to the building? Uh, the building was a kind of a square box building. And uh, what we did, we did a completely revamp in the look of the business, the, bu the, the building. Uh, we have nice signs, we changed the colors. It looked really, really nice. And that's where the money went for. The, mon the money was uh, partially utilized for the revamp of the facade of the building. programs like this are for your business and for other business that might be interested in signing up? For me, I think it's very important, particularly for smaller businesses. We are a little bit bigger business problem, but a small business definitely will really benefit greatly off that.
Frank. Yes. You can just you can just go straight into the others. Okay, fish grill. Yes. to be interviewing Joseph Maggie, which is the proud owner of the Fish Grill restaurant here locally in Dania Beach. And he's also a recipient of the Dania Beach Commercial Improvement Grant Program. How has the Dania Beach CRA's Commercial Improvement Grant assisted your business? That is possibly the best thing that's ever happened to any small business. Uh, it's very difficult many times for a small business person uh, to develop or improve their business on just their funds alone. And anytime you can get an opportunity with local, the city, uh, municipality to help out and be a grant is a godsend. It has really helped us out tremendously. We put possibly the most beautiful sign you can imagine on the building. And in doing so, because uh, we didn't have uh, but a very, very small window sign on the building. Now with the uh, CRA grant, it enabled us to go out and get a large sign on the top of the building, which had gotten so many comments from people that even lived locally that didn't know we were here. are programs such as the Daniel Beach CRA's Commercial Improvement Grant to small businesses such as yours. Many of us don't have all the resources we need. That's why we're small business. Uh, and most of the, the small businesses that I know struggle from time to time. So with a grant such as the CRA has been such a, uh, a help, a plus, that it's innumerable. You, you, you can't imagine how it helps someone of our size or what do, who don't or doesn't have many times the wherewithal to uh, accomplish what they'd like to accomplish. So it's been, it's been wonderful and I, and I, I just hope that something of this nature uh, continues for other small businesses because it's something we all need. shopping center um, in Dania Beach that spans 222 through 236 on North Federal Highway. We were grateful to receive the CRA funds to help improve our property, which was in need of some serious renovation. to paint our buildings, which were in need of a nice new fresh coat and uh, do some gutter repairs and new gutters to keep the facade looking great. Um, we also were able to do um, the parking lot, which has made a huge difference. Uh, new lighting that we did on the exterior portions of the building, as well as um, the main parking lot in the middle, which has been a huge help. And we've gotten a lot of compliments and it's been transformed. 
So the CRA uh, helped us with that in a big way because we were looking to do it, but you know, getting those funds together was tough. So the 20,000 per building was a great help. Could you tell us uh, what level of financial investment you have put into the property overall? Oh, uh, six figures. We had always wanted to do it, but like that amount of money was a lot for us as, you know, small business owners. And, a, and it's it's a family owned um, business and shopping center and family run. So it, it was definitely an undertaking, but now it's, we, we see the marked improvement and um, a lot of people just encouraged us and, you know, want to be in our shopping center. So it's... Anytime our property owners invest in themselves, uh, we are definitely standing in support of that. And anything that we can do to assist you and your tenants in the future, uh, we would certainly love to do that. We don't typically have uh, a property owner with that much square footage and linear feet on Federal Highway. Yep. So because of that, we were able to do uh, two grants for this project. Right. Um, I'm very grateful for the investment that you have also put into the property. And then we are going to continue improving and continue. We've got some new tenants coming in um, because the facade has definitely been improved and people are looking at our area and at our shopping center. So I just want to say thank you to all of the applicants that participated. They were really good sports about it. This was done via Zoom at what we thought was the height of the pandemic at the time. And, you know, we didn't even um, go to their locations and prep them or anything like that. They were really good sports about it. And we do have two potential applicants that we are working with. So we're trying to bring forward additional uh, projects for your approval. And once we get further along with those potential applicants, we will bring those projects. Thank you. Board Member Brandon Yes, good evening, everyone. I would like to know if uh, the grant uh, for the fish grill, all that work that was done, was that done with one grant up to 20,000? So the CRA contributed for the signage that went onto the fish grills uh, their awning, their, their roof. Now, the best part about this grant is that we require the property owner to provide a match of at least 30%. Most property owners, they go above and beyond that, which is great for our taxable values and for our assessments. So the fish grill owner, they actually did their roof on their own and the CRA provided the funding for the signage. So we usually provide a little, but we get a lot as far as improvements. So you paid from the CRA for the sign? Correct. For that big, big sign? Correct. Okay, just wanted to know because it seemed like an awful lot of work to get done there for just a $20,000 grant. It didn't seem possible to me. And I noticed that on your um, photo thing here, it didn't even say anything about that. Well, we tried to uh, highlight what the additional improvements were that the property owner did. And I think we just listed, you know, that they did a new roof. Um, each one of the projects that we presented today, those property owners did a lot for their exterior and Associates MD did even more for their interior as well. Well, then straighten me out. Do we usually do it that way? Give money for the sign like that? That's one of the eligible improvements. Uh, so it can be new windows, it can be paint, landscaping, um, anything for your facade. Uh, it can be lighting, it can be parking lot improvements. So anything for the exterior. Uh, we used to do uh, grants for the interior, but that was suspended because we really wanted to focus on those improvements that would uh, have the most impact on Federal Highway. So. Yeah, it's the most beautiful sign of all the restaurants I've ever seen. It wraps around the building. It really is beautiful. I just thought it was an awful lot of work that was done there. 
and I couldn't figure out, you know, really how he had, had how he was able to afford all that because I know that I don't think they were doing that well. Probably because there was no sign there that they were losing money. Nobody even knew it was there because it's a, it looked like a dead corner. All right, did a good job on that though. Thank you. Well, thank you for your approvals of these grants. Okay. All right. Thank you. I, I, I'll just say that um, I think the Fish Girl sign has worked its best improvement. I think I've seen yet on Federal Highway. It really it, it pops out, so it's very impressive. Um, next item is the central turn. There are there any polls? I'd like to pull um, number five. I think I was going to pull that too, but since you're pulling it, that's fine. Okay. Motion I'll to approve. Motion. Uh, go okay. ahead. Motion to approve with the exception of number five. I second it. Uh, can I uh, Raquel, go ahead. Um, Chair Llewellyn, uh, with the approval of item number four, we would need to do the lottery for the homes. Okay. We can do that first and then come back to number five. How about that? Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, so go ahead and explain, Raquel, if you'd like. Uh, so uh, the CRA has received uh, two applicants that we deem to be eligible to move forward in the process to become a home buyer, a first time home buyer through our affordable housing program. And so uh, today we have Dowdy Jean Lewis and Corinthian Jones. Uh, we've inserted their names into the, the home box replica that Chair Llewellyn has. And I know last time we were able to yeah. have more participation, but because of, you know, us keeping our social distance, uh, Chair Llewellyn will conduct the lottery. I don't think I got to pull one last time anyway, so my turn. <laughs> and this is just an order of they get, the, the first person is the first choice, correct? Correct. Okay. Corinthian Jones. And then the second is, I'm sorry. Dowdy Jean Lewis. Congratulations to both. Yay. <laughs> Wish they were here. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And they're actually going to be neighbors, correct? There will be there will be one home that separates them. Right. But they're Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, number 5.5. A uh, resolution of the Board of Directors of the Dana Beach Community Redevelopment Agency, the CRA, of the City of Dana Beach, Florida, establishing the Dana Beach CRA Small Business Resil Resiliency Reimbursement Grant Program and amending the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget by allocating $50,000 to fund the grant. Providing for conflicts, further providing for an effective date. Uh, I pulled this because um, a couple of things. I, I had talked to executive director about this the other day, and um, I'd like to see because I know this is limited to small businesses of five people or less, correct, including the owner. Correct, and and that would typically be considered like a micro small business. Um, were you able, I know we had discussed this, were you able to find out how many businesses of that size we have? No, I, I, I am not able to find that out. I do know that we have about 2,200 businesses uh, with business tax receipts that are in the CRE district. Because what, I, what I'd like to see is, especially those small businesses, if there's some way, because $1,000 doesn't, doesn't go very far in a business. Um, and and I know that it's being limited basically to PPE and, and hand sanitizer and things like that that are being used in, in the, in the 
um, businesses. I'm just wondering if, if it turns out that we have fewer businesses than we think, um, if there might be a way to uh, provide them with a little more money um, through that 50,000. Um, Cause I know that came from other resources. You had, you had the 50,000 taken from something else. So I'm just trying to see if, if make sure that we use it in the best way that's most efficient for the businesses themselves. Um, I, I hate to limit them strictly to PPE and that sort of thing. Um, if there's something else that they really need more help with, uh, that, you know, cause they may be getting funding from something else as well. So I'm just trying to figure out if there's a way that we might be able to find out how many small businesses or micro businesses there are and see if there's a way that we can actually increase the amount that we give them. The thousand dollars, a little bit helps, but it just seems like it's, it's, it doesn't really do much. Well, what I can say is that um, with the direct outreach and contact that we've made with our small business community since the pandemic started, many of the businesses that we've contacted would qualify at having um, five employees, including the owner. So we project that this funding will go rapidly. We also looked at having it be a, a reimbursable grant um, to assist those who have already uh, spent those resources that they didn't anticipate having to utilize for PPE, for cleaning services, for uh, equipment needed to transition their business site uh, so that it's um, safe and not hazardous to uh, patrons as well as their staff. Uh, we also have extensive information about um, providing marketing in our CRA plan, so we wanted to include that as well. I know many businesses had to um, print menus that are disposable or had to purchase signage that they wouldn't have had to purchase before. Um, some of them are boosting on Facebook, you know, out of control, trying to really grasp at any customers that they can. Um, I, I would love to have allocated additional dollars um, for this grant program. As you know, we've been very conservative with our spending since, uh, since March, 10th when we um, canceled the art and seafood celebration and we've been focused on trying to keep a balanced budget through the end of the fiscal year as well as be very uh, conservative going into our budget for fiscal year 2021. So there's a lot of things that we have intentionally not been pursuing that was originally budgeted so that we could carve out some money for our business community in this way. Um, I do think that there, there could be opportunity to do more. I will be proposing in our fiscal 20, um, 2021 budget additional resources for our business community. And that's something that the CRA board will be able to take a look at. Um, but I, I do think we have enough businesses that could uh, exhaust $50,000. Well, I'm, I'm sure we do. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to figure out another, another way. It's one of the things that I've noticed, for example, is in some, a lot of businesses, um, not just here, but everywhere, um, they're, they're letting certain things go that they're considering to be not as necessary and expense. For example, <clears throat> if they have a sign outside of the building that's damaged or needs a light replaced or something like that, it's not necessarily their top priority to get that fixed um, because they're more concerned about keeping the lights on in the, inside the building and making sure they can pay their employees and, and you know pay the rent and that sort of thing. Um, so that's what I was thinking as well, that it might be something that, <clears throat> similar to the grants that we were just talking about, the commercial uh, beautification grant, uh, improvement grants, um, where it might be something that could be put towards that as well, if there was something that they might need um, in order to help with that. Because we don't want to have, you know, there's the broken window theory where you, you, know, you start to see things that are not looking like they're supposed to, and, and it, it, it brings in more crime and that sort of thing as well. Um, so just, you know, some thoughts on that. And I don't know if anybody else has any idea when I see Commissioner, uh, Board, Member Brown, um, Board Member James has a hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm so glad that we are doing something and I know it's not as much as other cities are doing, um, but I'm glad that we are doing something for our businesses. I Two things, I wanted to see if, um, you, um, executive director, have identified any uh, savings within the CRA. I know that might be slim to none, 
that could possibly add on to either if you if you know that you can exhaust 50 businesses to help more than 50 businesses within the CRA, or um, would that help make the grant a larger amount than just $1,000 if you identified any other savings within the CRA? And the second thing um, is that I think this is an awesome program, and I know more of our businesses that, you know, are not necessarily just in the CRA also need some type of assistance. Um, and so I, I am going to reach out um, to the city manager to see if um, they could mirror something like this, if they could identify any savings or whatever, and mirror something like this so we can also reach out to the businesses that are not just in the CRA because I think that you're doing an awesome job. Uh, we're coming up with this. You know, um, so many businesses are closing and all around, and I, I just think that this would be a great opportunity for us to up the amount if possible and um, also mirror this to go outside of the CRA's reach with having a mirror program um, done by the city. Uh, if I could address that, um, I, I will say that you know, given the fact that we know we have 2,200 businesses in the CRA district, let's say even one quarter of them were small businesses. Um, we're still we're looking at over 500 businesses that are considered small. So uh, having $50,000 and up to $1,000 means at a minimum we're going to be able to service 50 businesses. Maybe it could be more. Let's say a business only needed uh, 600, or that they could show uh, um, backup to need reimbursement for $600 worth then we would have an additional $400 in the pot. And so we potentially could service more businesses than 50. Uh, we also want to look at our budget uh, going forward. So I do think, Board Member James, that there is potential to identify more funds, but I would prefer to start here. And if we need to come back uh, at our next meeting and ask for an additional um, allocation through a budget amendment for additional uh, funding, uh, then that's something that I think is, is certainly possible, but I wouldn't want to give a number uh, on the spot right now. And, but I, I don't want to rule out that we could potentially provide some more funding. We do have some cost savings that are anticipated that haven't um, already been calculated. And so there is potential to have some more funding, but I would prefer to wait until August 25th um, so we can evaluate that and see how, how the grant goes for the, the first couple of weeks. Okay, awesome. Um, how much, due to COVID, and we, and we haven't really been traveling, how much, is there a savings there with the travel budget? Because if so, I would like to donate whatever is, you know, allocated or less for my travel to the businesses because I'm not going to be traveling anytime soon. I, I don't see a need to travel. So I, I would be willing to donate whatever, you know, um, expenses that, that is budgeted for my travel to the cause as well. So. Oh, okay. Uh, that is uh, something I don't have. Um, the line items in front of me, we did do some estimates a, a couple meetings ago that talked about cost savings in terms of travel because uh, we didn't anticipate that any board member was traveling or that staff would be traveling. Although there may still be potential for virtual trainings, which would come under the travel budget, uh, but we have not identified any virtual trainings that staff would like to participate in. So it's still open for uh, the board to do that. Uh, we can certainly go and look at uh, what your allocation, what the balance is for your travel and um, look at bringing that back in August, as well as any additional funding if we have uh, any that, that's available. Okay, thank you. Vice Chair? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, no, I was just going to say, I mean, obvious, I, I thought that would already be built in, that obviously um, none of us would be traveling, so you could take all of our traveling money. And the only people who traveled on CRA was um, 
board member James and I who were getting our certification. Uh, the other ones never did anything. So I, I thought that was a given. So if it's not a given, uh, uh, take everyone's money. <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think anyone's gonna fight and all of a sudden say they want their CRA travel money. So I'd imagine uh, if you haven't already done it, uh, go ahead and do that. <laughs> we ha we have a like a, a working budget for cost savings that we anticipate for this year. Uh, we did sure. put all of the travel savings into that number, um, but if if board member James and vice chair Odman want to specify that your travel resources go toward uh, this program on top of the, the 50,000 that we've identified, I think that there is room for us to explore that and perhaps bring it back to outline that that uh, cost savings is gonna go towards the grant. Could, could you ask my, my colleagues as well? Because I can't imagine that any yeah. of the other uh, board members would have an issue with donating theirs as well. Um, should we be lucky enough that a virtual training uh, does come online? I, I don't think it would be problematic. I, I don't remember where board member James left off, but I think maybe I have two classes. I think she's ahead of me. Maybe she only has one. Um, we could just request, you know, can we have, you know, make that specific request but I don't even think that's happening anytime soon. So maybe ask the other board members too, if they would be interested. Hey, board members, are you interested in donating your money you don't use? I'll do it. I'm interested, but I'd like to hear from um, our finance director as to if there was anything else that needed to be, that that money was needed for. Because um, I know that, I know that it was pulled out initially. I remember it being in the spreadsheet that we got for the, the, the chart that we got as far as where the savings was so i just wanted i'd, I'd like to find out from uh, frank if you could tell well, us we, if, if i may chair well and before frank um interjects uh on thursday frank and i will be meeting with his team and with the cre team to finalize our budget and that includes looking at the projections for this year to make sure that we have a, a balanced budget through the end of the fiscal year but go ahead frank Yeah, I, I agree with what the executive director said. And when we look at things on Thursday, we'll, we'll take into account any potential savings and look at the current year budget, look at next year's request and just make sense of it all and have an answer for you one way or another, how much could be available to, for, you know, for a budget adjustment for additional funding or for whatever the CRA board wishes to use it for. And that, okay, so then it could be used for that might not be able to you just need to look at it and see basically yeah i think we just need to take a good look at everything and and the, the whole budget of the cra and, and the current I year, hear next year's okay. budget just kind of look at everything as a whole you know without looking at one thing on its own so right. you know, and and you know like executive director said we're all together we'll look at it together and i think we'll all come up with a reasonable solution okay frank we're having a little trouble hearing you you're real quiet on that end sorry um so, all right, so that's fine. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I just, I'd, I'd like to see where, where it ends up, but I also, I'd like to explore um, using the money for something other than PPE and that sort of thing. I, I, I really do think some of these businesses really probably need help with their rent. Um, they may need help with their payroll. They may need help with some other things. So I'd like to explore the other op options for that as well. If, if, if I could address that, uh, it, I don't know if you recall, but back when the shutdown first started, I, I communicated with the board saying that if we wanted to initiate a program that addressed uh, rent or payroll, things of that nature, um, that we did not have anything in our existing CRA plan that would authorize that. And so that's why we didn't immediately roll out with uh, a grant or a program because our CRA plan uh, didn't have a provision for that. So I mentioned that we would A, need a CRA plan amendment and B, need a budget amendment to do so. When we got into the reopening phase, um, we identified some needs through the outreach that we were doing with the businesses um, based on the reopening phase. So that was the PPE and um, uh, the marketing. 
So if that is something that's to be explored, uh, we would have to go and update our CRA plan, which is a, quite a bit of a process. It's, it's not just um, bringing that up. Yeah. I don't want you to have to do that. What, I, what I'm saying is that I'd like to explore other other avenues as well, as opposed to just strictly making it for PPE. That's all. If there is, a, if there are other things that are within the plan that can that it can be included in that, that's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, so the the eligible uses that we have here, um, I, I don't know if you've had it, if every board member has had a chance to review, but if we want to look at some other creative things that fall under this umbrella that we can justify through our CRE plan. Maybe there's room for us to do that. Um, we have cleaning sanitation supplies and or services that will allow a small business to maintain an on-site workforce by reducing exposure to COVID-19, personal protective equipment and health safety equipment, signage promoting health safety standards, advertising and marketing expenses to encourage patronage during shelter in place orders and during slash after reopening period, services, tools, or equipment for businesses to convert to online sales or delivery or outdoor services during shelter in place orders and during or after reopening period, remote access equipment or software that allows employees to work from home, uh, other expenditures related to the intent of the grant as determined by the CRA in its sole discretion. So if, if there are any, I, I think that there's, you know, a little bit of flexibility there that if we, we have an application, uh, we can take a look at it and see if it falls within our discretion and with the intent of the grant. And, you know, we look at our CRA plan and we can justify that this is, you know, something that's in alignment. Then I think we are clear to do that based on the language of the grant. That's reasonable. Uh, board member Harris. Yes. Um, Executive Director Raquel Williams. Um, have you or could we do some in-service training programs for uh, the availability of the funds from the EIDL, the Emergency Income Disaster Loan, and also the next round of funding I'm hearing about for the PPP? Because um, I know from experience helping a few people with the EIDL that the uh, application process is all done online, very easy, and you almost get the results in one day. And then the next day you can, um, see what your qualifications are. Let's say if you, you're you gonna provide your bank information and almost one day later after that, they will fund it to your uh, bank account. So the money has been um, very easy to get. And I know from, like I said, helping people that it may be something that we could uh, help other small businesses with because you know what I'm hearing in the, in the media and everything that there is still money and funds available. I think in the PPP, there's also $1.3 billion available. So anybody that needs help, uh, filling out those applications. It is a lot of paperwork, but you know, I'm happy to help anybody with uh, you know, sending the uh, faxes and all that because uh, the response has been very, very good. So if we need to do a schedule, you know, a social distance in service from City Hall with some small businesses, we'll, we'll just get some laptops down there and we'll get people signed up. I think that's a good way to handle it. It's free money. I mean, the, the EIDL is a 30 year loan so, for instance, if you got fifty thousand dollars in a thirty-year loan, you don't have to start paying it back until one year from the time you get it, and then you have thirty years to pay it back. I think at three point two five percent interest over thirty years, or you can pay it back in full if you don't need it. Um, I, I I know that the uh, Small Business Administration has some uh, virtual technical assistance. Uh, training that they do and we have promoted that a bit. I think we can probably up promotion on that and trying to connect people with uh, those who are administering the grant so that you know we can have them uh, answer questions for our business community. One of the uh, I would love to do an in-service training. I think that would be would be great and I think um, just, just given where we are uh, with the pandemic I would want us. Uh, I would want us to try the virtual route uh, first, and you know, as things improve and as funding it remains available, uh, then we can, I think, look at having something at City Hall. But for for now, I would want to promote the SBA's um, virtual mentoring that they have, and they have a couple yeah. partners. Um, Score is one of them, and we can promote that and try to uh, have people utilize that tool. Yeah. 
Okay, because there was also some promotion being available through uh, the Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance. Wasn't there on some of their Zoom calls? They had a an expert on there from the SBA. So there's resources are there. I think we should kind of make the best use of them as we can. And uh, you know, like I said, I helped three people do the EIDL loan, and one of them got twenty one thousand dollars, one of them got one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and one of them got one point three million. So the money's available, and it's easy to get. And the payback couldn't get. I mean, 30 years, you know, that's like a given. Um, the PPP, have, I'm sorry, what? I was just going to add that they have suspended the ad, advance money under EIDL. So that portion is no longer available. Um, okay. As uh, that was the portion that you didn't have to repay. Um, so now it's strictly loans. Okay. Yeah, that's right. And the PPP converted to a grant if you met the parameters of the uh, application for your uh, payroll and your rent and your utilities. So I'm just saying, whatever we can do. Okay, so um, I guess we can go ahead and approve this as it is, um, and then just look into the other aspects of it, see if we can either increase it or um, I guess you'll get back to us with that. Yes, I, I would like to explore that thoroughly and then uh, as needed, bring it back August 25th for approval of additional funds. I do, I do think we should keep it at a thousand though because we just have so many businesses and we want to spread it out as much as we can. Um, you know, I, I wish we had more to allocate as you know, many other CRAs do and cities have, have been doing but we are working with what we do have. And I think if we keep it at a low amount, we can help more people and more businesses. Okay, anyone wanna make a motion? I make the motion to approve, what is it, 5.5? .5? There a second. A second. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, no proposals and bids, discussion and possible action. Uh, styrofoam regulations. To the attorney. Okay, everybody. The mayor was approached some, some weeks ago by a, a local environmental activist to see if the city would be interested in sponsoring and adopting a regulation that would prohibit the use of styrofoam products in the city, city hall, basically. We are preempted by state law, meaning we cannot regulate styrofoam ordinarily for its sale or distribution. Uh, and that's uh, been done by the industry so that uh, nobody can take their ability to use their products. But cities such as Miami Beach, Largo over on the West Coast, and all of Orange County, and Hollywood is in the midst of doing this, have adopted ordinances that prohibit uh, vendors and distributors from marketing and selling and, and providing styrofoam products uh, to be used in the city. So in our case, it would be any, anything that's supplied to the city for its events. And the reason it's here before the CRA, because the CRA has a number of events where vendors and contractors would be using these products. The ordinance would require those people not to use those products and to use an alternative based on plant-based. There's a, a variety of things that can be used for styrofoam. It's a limited way to begin to reduce the effect uh, on the landfill. You know what styrofoam does, it's here for many, many hundreds of years. It breaks into bits, as we all are aware. So it's one way to start the, the, uh, the process, but it affects the CRA and the city so that any contracts we have that are ongoing, it wouldn't prohibit those contracts from being completed unless the people voluntarily offer to move to non-styrofoam products. But any new contracts and new vendors, and anybody doing those kinds of events for the city or the CRA would be precluded from using those products. Their exceptions are prepackaged foods that are already been filled. Uh, anybody who is in a disabled who needs these kind of uh, uh, products to, to be used for, for whatever purposes they have, uh, free samples or food distribution drives, <clears throat> and catering for private events. Those would be exceptions. We also propose that we could be given a six month time within which to acquaint the, the community with which we work and the CRA works to get them geared up for this. As you know, we've done this with the plastic straw ordinance. As uh, we're one of the first cities to do that, it's been successful and doing well. And uh, this is added on to that 
uh, list of ordinances that try to help protect the environment here locally. Uh, the, the ordinance is out for first reading for commission tonight. I won't go back through it tonight. I'll do that at the second reading on August 5. But for tonight, it's just to acquaint you for the CRA purposes of what this will do. Okay. Uh, board member James. Yes, thank you. Um, so this is only for city owned property within it'd, it'd the be city? A, it'd be, if, you, if you provide uh, these kind of cups or packages for use in a city facility, whether it's IT Parker or here or any place that is a city owned property, or you have a food truck that's on city property or anything else like that, it would prohibit that use and distribution. Um, I, I will ask, because I read through it, that you define um, private events and does that include like organizations that have city funding that are a private organization? I'm not sure if that falls under that as well. I don't even know um, what, you know, catering for private events. We don't have many events um, within our city. I, I was hoping that we didn't have the preemption because it would have been much more effective if we could have done it like the plastic straw ordinance and was able to, you know, um, eventually be citywide for the entire city. But I understand that's beyond our control. But I do want to make sure that private events is um, spelled out very clearly. So there are no issues with someone that say, for instance, the MLK Renaissance Corporation who gets funding from the city um, that they would definitely have to change what they're doing if they're having an event there or are they considered a, would that be considered a private event? Okay, well, we're happy to be for second reading. I won't be able to do it for, in time for tonight, but for second reading of the ordinance when the commission adopts it, we will get that defined and to be clarified for you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Board Member Brandon Murray? Yeah. You know, Tom, at a time like this, this is stupid as far as I'm concerned because God forbid they ever included restaurants when we're, we're facilitating and, and, and begging people to order food to go. It goes out in styrofoam containers. On top of that, I have over $500 worth, and it's considered city property, and Commissioner Harris has eaten with us, even at over at Parker. It's all styrofoam. Everything is. We don't wash dishes. But I'm thinking to myself, we're talking on one hand to help businesses, and on the other hand, something like that at this time when they don't have money, thank God, they're not included, right? It would be no. disastrous for all of the restaurants to have to stop sending food to go home in a styrofoam container. Okay, let, let me clarify. For all the, all the restaurants and stores that use styrofoam, they are not affected. It would Why? only be because it, we, the, the state of Florida has preempted or kept to itself the ability to regulate styrofoam and it's told cities and counties you are not authorized to regulate or prohibit styrofoam. Is this step one though towards that Tom? I, I doubt that. Only if, only that would only happen if the state relaxes its hold on that like they do for plastic bags for example. Yeah and yeah. The city, the city of Coral Gables tried to say okay we know that state says we can't regulate plastic bags we're going to do it anyhow. They got sued they lost and you don't there's no point in doing things that don't make sense like that to me. It was a statement that they wanted to make. This is just a small way, but a, a significant way for the city and the CRA to let people know with whom we deal that those products are not what we want to have used on our property. So and that does mean that my $500 worth, I got to throw out. Well, you'll have six months. There'll be six, six months to get used to the, the process. So from the time it's adopted, which is August, sometime in next year, uh, early next year, the law would take effect. That's probably enough time to use up that. Uh, yeah, if the coronavirus allows us to open, yeah, I could easily do that within five lunches because it's over a hundred per lunch. Sure, sure, but that's that's the intent. It's it, it, it's limited in its uh, effect. It, we can't go any uh, farther than this, know. but it's a statement for the environment. Thank you. Okay, okay, that's all I've got for any questions. 
Board Member James. Yes, from listening to that, I, I guess I have a suggestion. Can we um, put the effective date six months after everything opens back up? Because we don't know if six months from now, no one will still be having any type of events to be able to use their inventory. So I guess to be fair, six months to uh, whenever everything is open back up to having events and having meetings so that, you know, people have the opportunity to use their inventory. Is that an option for the board? We it did would that be, with the straws. It would be, you know, with, with the straws, we did it for six months and then it took yeah. effect. Yeah, but, you're right. But based on Commissioner James's suggestion, I don't know what trigger event would be the one that says, okay, it's over. So we well, can who go says to... we have to follow Miami? No, no, we don't. This is this is uh, something that we put together. The assistant city attorney worked very hard on this. She did a really nice job. Borrowed from the other cities on, the, on their successes. And they're working there. But for us, uh, again, we can have this go up to the six month period, see where we are with this virus. And if you want to push it out farther, I just can't think of a, a, an event which says it's over. Like, uh, I, I like that idea. If you, if, you, if you adopt it and say six months, but then we see it six months and we can come back and revisit it. Right, Sounds and, push, good to and, me. and push it out further. We can do that. So it'll be on the books, but not enforced until you direct it to be enforced. So we can do that. Yeah, because I, I believe that the inventory that we just bought with our budgeted money was close to $1,000. Absolutely, when you count in all of the paper cups, I mean, the plastic cups that we use and everything, I, I, I know that that will eat that up real fast. Okay, well, that's a, that's a way to, to reach it. I so like the way that chairman, uh, board chair, uh, Lori said about waiting it out and if we have to revisit it to extend it that we can do it. Is that what my understanding was? Yeah. Chair? Yeah. So we'll do that. We'll, we'll, we can adopt it at the commission meeting tonight. First reading, second reading August 25, six months after that before it takes effect. But we would bring it back to you to say the six months is approaching. Do you want to push it out another six months? That will be your directive, your choice. Okay? Yes. Thanks. Vice yes. Chair, you're, you're muted. There you go, you're ready. I was just going to say, if you're going to wait six months, know that you might be waiting six more months and then six more months and then probably half of you will be dead. So uh, I think I would come up with- What the heck does saying. that mean? Because it's ridiculous if you keep saying you're going to push it out six months. In six months, coronavirus isn't going anywhere for a very long time. So I would, at the next six months or tonight, come up with what your benchmark is that you're comfortable with. I don't know what it is for each of you. For you, uh, board member, it sounds like you're trying to use up your stock of what, uh, what you bought. But if you're just going to keep saying six months, well, in six months, you're going to be saying, uh, I'll bet on it right now. Well, we're going to need another six months. So you might want to come up with some measurable time-specific criteria for what that means for the majority of you, for three or what more What do you of suggest? You. What does she um, suggest? You know me. I'm, a, I, I'm very much anti-single-use single, uh, single plastic. I would say eat your loss and invest in some paper or plant-based products, um, and that the 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 long-term effects of of having the styrofoam and having it around for another 10,000 years isn't worth it. Um, but I, I understand where you're coming from, where you're saying, well, that was you used up the whole budget, so you, you know I, I don't know if that's something you would have to go back and talk to your your board about. I don't know how the seniors, how it works with that board, but I do think you need to come up with something and maybe it'll be at the next six months. That's fine, but come up with something or else you're just going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. So whether it's what? the vaccine came out, whether it's you're at phase three, phase three or phase four or the final phase of opening as, uh, as outlined by the, the governor's reopening plan. Maybe that's something that's very concrete when you're at that last phase. I think it's called phase four. 
then you're when once you've reached that point, then you'll do it. But don't leave it so nebulous. Well, at this point, it would be adopted, but only to be enforced under your direction. So it won't go on, it'll be on the books, but it won't be enforced until you tell us now you're ready. Well, right. But once you pass something and saying it's not going to be enforced, then, you know, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm passing something right now, but it's not enforced. You know, it only, it only matters once it's enforced and it has teeth. But I'd rather buy the time, like, uh, like the uh, chair said. By the time, the time is on our side, I hope. According to you, though, we might be dead. Well, those of us who are still alive can make this decision. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm, well, my only suggestion is that we, we say six months, but give it an, give us an opportunity at the six month mark to come back, revisit the timeline on it. Doesn't mean it has to be another six months. It could, at that point, we may have a better sense. I would hope we have a better sense of where this whole thing is. Hope, I'm hoping that we're back in a, in a somewhat normal place. But, that's, that's what we'll do. We'll, br we'll bring it back after that time expires. Board member okay. has, has a question. Yes, my vote is it. My vote is it to bring it back, but if that's what it is, it's what it is. I do agree that we do need uh, something that is measurable. That's why I said six months after the city decides to reopen, um, because we don't know when that's going to be. We don't know if it's gonna be a year from now. We don't know if that's gonna be two months from now, but um, if it's two months from now and everything magically disappears, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want it to wait four more months, you know, until adoption. So um, I definitely think six months after everything is opened back up to give people the opportunity to um, to use their inventory. And even if it's passed today um, and then the enforcement comes and says it's six months after we reopen, it allows uh, different vendors to understand and start budgeting to make sure that they are stocking up on those types of products to understand that six months after we reopen, that is going to be the enforcement date. I think that prevents it from continuing to come back and having these discussions as well. Okay, everybody understands this only applies to city facilities, city events, city vendors. Okay, okay, we understand. Uh, I, I'm, so, I, I'm sorry, through the chair, yeah. I, I understood the discussion, but what was the consensus on it? Well, it, it's on the actual city commission agenda. So, I know, but, but the CRA board would have to discuss and come to a consensus in order for the provision uh, in the ordinance to apply to the CRA. So I just wanted to be firm on what the consensus was. Well, I anticipate I my, my vote and what I think. I anticipate that we have a six months built into it already. That was the plan. So sometime in next February, that six months will expire. Before that happens, we will bring it to the CRA and the commission to say, the six months is going to expire. Do you want to ex extend it? Or do you have a watershed moment that you say, when this happens, enforce it, but make a decision. That's sort of where we are. Was that no one knows. So you know, no one can tell you. Or is that what you're recommending? Or I'm fine with that. Is there anybody else fine with that? We just bring it back to you. It's going to be controlled by the CRA board and the commission when it is enforced. Well, since I won't be on the board then, because I'm termed out, at least you should have the memory up here to remember why I would, at that time, based on circumstances, would ask you, and I would come before you, to ask you to extend it. We understand. Okay? That's a, because it's money. It's not plastic cups. It's money. Okay. Thank you all. So do we have a consensus on that? I think it's clear to me. We're all shaking our head on this the, end. The outcome is it's going to be effective in around February, but it won't until we come back to you as a board and you as a commission to say, it's ready to be enforced. Do you wish to extend it? Or do you have now have an event that you're waiting for? We should know by then where the vaccine process is and if people are yes, getting inoculated. We'll just know, we'll know better. A dumb yes, question. Uh, Chair, I have yes. a dumb question. Does this even mean the signs that people put up? 
like vote for or this for, they're all plastic. This is for styrofoam products to use for food and beverages. Oh, okay, never mind. Thank you. Okay. So yes, we have a consensus then. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks, Bill. Okay. Okay. Thank all you. Right. All. Board member comments. Uh, board member Brandmark. Yeah. Um, I'd like to show you uh, based on one quick thing, like what Raquel was saying, and you were all talking about reimbursement because people did things for this. I thought this was cute. It was on the table at a restaurant called House Rules. And I thought it was amazing. And they did it. I'm going to assume this is football because I don't know the signals in football. Rule one, we run a clean game. And then it says, and it, it's got, you'll notice your table's empty. This is to reduce contact areas for germs to hide. Then they got rule two, give us a sign. What they did was they put a metal holder on your table. And when you want them, you have to turn that sign upward. That is to limit contact with you. I thought that was amazing. I stole this, by the way. But since I'm saying it on TV, I'll bring it back to the restaurant because I didn't ask to take it. All right, that's the service sign. I thought that was cute. Rule three, no offsides. We're keeping our distance. We won't approach you unless you use the service sign. I thought that was, but I think they must be football things because I don't know those signals. And that was the house rules. Rule six, uh, rule four, time out. Please follow the floor signs to and from the restrooms. Wait your turn and wash your hands. These are house rules. Rule five, no illegal handoffs. You no need to hand the dishes or the glassware to our staff. They got it. And that's it. And it just says rule six, game on. The menu is packed with fan favorites. And I just thought this is one of the things a restaurant went out of their way to do that you just put up the uh, sign when you want the service. Otherwise, they stay away from you. That's avoiding contact. And I just wanted to uh, say also thanks for the uh, 30 boxes of food that I ran around in this heat today giving out. I believe it came from maybe... Uh, but I think Commissioner Grace or St. Ruth's, I don't know where, but thank you for the 30 boxes. The people were so appreciative of it at Meadowbrook. All right, thank you. Board Member Harris, no comments? He's shaking his head no. Okay. Board Member James? No. Okay. Okay. Vice Chair? No comments tonight. Okay, no comments from me either. Uh, and for no information items, and we'll be adjourned until our 7 p.m. meeting. Thank you very much.